Welcome to what, as far as I know, is the first virtual talk in our seminar series, though perhaps we've had some off and on over the years. Um, I expect we'll be in this format for, for quite a while here. Um, I'm, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Daniel Epstein. I'm an assistant professor here in the department, and I'm scheduling the seminar series for this year. Um, I'm, when I'm done talking, I'm going to post two links into the chat. One is just the, the slate of speakers that we have coming this quarter. Um, the second is a Google form for if you have recommendations for speakers who we should be inviting virtually. Um, I'm midway through scheduling winter quarter. Uh, there's still some openings in spring. Um, and so if you have suggestions for people who would be great to have out here or out here virtually, then, then that's a good place to do that. And with that, I think I'll throw it over to Andre to start on the state of the department. Cool. Thank you, Daniel. And let's see if I'm good enough to share my slides. There we go. Well, thank you all for joining. Appreciate it on a Friday afternoon. Um, this is a tradition. I miss being in 6011 talking to all of you because right now I see none of you, uh, but that's okay. So state of the department and where we're at. And I'm actually going to start with a slide that I used uh, last year. Let's see if it does what it needs to do. There we go. A slide that I used last year, um, which was 2009. And, and for those of you who know me, I like to open you know, my talks usually with a little joke here or there. And this was the building last year. And we thought this was disastrous. Um, this is where we are today. Um, and I, I don't think I can give this talk without putting it in this context, right? We are facing wildfires uh, that have, have affected students and faculty. Uh, we're facing COVID. We're all home. Um, and we know of students and faculty and staff that have been affected or that have had folks who've been sick or who have lost folks. Um, election 2020, I put that one there because we all know it's time to vote. but a number of our students are not here at this moment in time. Uh, so whatever is happening in the government is right now interfering with, um, with our ability to properly do our own jobs. And Black Lives Matter is, is something that's playing out right now um, that has hit the entire country, um, should have hit the entire country, um, and has lots of us thinking, reflecting, um, and working slowly but surely, uh, to create a better place, certainly locally in the department, uh, but more broadly so as well. So it's against this backdrop of everything that's going on uh, that I give the usual update. Those who know me know that that update usually is upbeat and positive. Uh, it will again be, I will actually talk about the good things that happen because I think it's important to share that. Uh, but I also look a little bit at the year ahead and what might be, might be coming. So let's start with campus and school news, which I uh, made a little shorter than I normally do, uh, simply because I know these Zoom meetings tend to go a little bit slower. Uh, first off, COVID-19, uh, kind of a mandatory slide is everybody should be doing the mandatory daily symptom check-in. I use the emails, you can use the app. Uh, campus needs it for a variety of purposes. Uh, there's a limited ability to work on campus for individuals and research groups. It requires dean's approval. So if you want to be on campus on a semi-regular basis or even occasionally to do your work, please reach out to me or to Marty. We can point you in the right direction on how to get that approval. Um, we must adhere to all the occupancy limits and practice social distancing as is plastered and postered all over the building and all over our floor. Um, so please read the signage and please adhere to it. And for those of you who noticed, uh, there now is also a mandatory flu, so flu shot uh, that you should be getting before a certain date. So this all in response to COVID-19. Um, in my role as department chair, uh, I ask you to kindly uh, follow the guidance that's there. Uh, 
the idea is that in the end, it's better for all of us um, and limits the exposure uh, that all of us would get. That said, let's go back to my typical update uh, where I start with just undergraduate numbers and then have graduate numbers. So at the undergraduate level, total freshman applicants was almost 98,000. 29,000 were admitted and 6,000 accepted. If you look at the numbers in parentheses, those are the numbers from last year. So slight uptick in both applicants and admitted, but you do notice a down, uh, slight downtick in the number of students that actually accept it. Um, the same for total transfer applicants, more applicants, uh, more admitted, but also fewer that actually accepted and that decided to join us. And we can you know, easily write that probably off onto the, the presence of COVID. Where do these undergrads go? A variety of places on campus. Um, I've highlighted information and computer sciences because that's our school. Um, you see a good uptick in the number of freshmen. Last year, there were 304. This year, there's 480. But you also see a commensurate drop in transfer students and actually a greater drop in transfer students from 432 to 151. Um, there is some management of enrollment happening. The 304 of freshmen last year was lower than it had been. Um, and at the transfer level, there used to be a transfer agreement with some community colleges that's no longer valid and that's causing some of that drop as well. Where do they go inside our school? Uh, not so different than other years. Uh, business information management, pretty stable. Computer game science actually saw a significant increase from 45 to 108. Um, that's, that's the highest for us amongst the four majors, again, highlighted in red that we offer in the department. Computer science went from 89 to 202, not such a surprise given how many more students were accepted at the freshman level. Um, and then again, you see the transfer level from 328 to 84 there. Uh, data science up some, uh, ICS undeclared a lot lower, and informatics and software engineering, the typical numbers though software engineering is up a little bit at the freshman level. Um, so not so different, at the school, there's a couple of items that I'll highlight before I jump into the department. Uh, so one is that Stacy Nicholas donated $5 million to UCI in support of diversity and inclusiveness and particularly provided this as an endowment to the Office of Access and Inclusion. And that office is run between engineering and ICS. Uh, Sharnia Artis is the one who runs that and this will give her and the program um, significant funds to actually mount various initiatives, um, be able to support our students in a variety of different ways and so on and so on. So we're super grateful for that particular gift, of course. There's another sort of gift that happened at the school level. Um, the Husso Plattner Institute is a university in Germany, in Berlin to be precise. Um, and they have entered into an agreement with ICS that will fund uh, 15 PhD students for three years um, as part of a partnership in machine learning and data science. Um, so again, very significant gift. Um, Hasso Plattner Institute sought us out, directly approached our dean and said, we would actually like to talk to you. We would like to institute this. And you know, as any good university then says is, okay, that looks like a legitimate thing. This looks like somebody essentially is bringing us a bag of money um, for our students, which is terrific. Um, and of course, there's the opportunity for great uh, shared resources, uh, shared, shared research. So I consider this again, uh, very good news and also testimony to the school um, and its accomplishments in this area uh, to date. School is in good financial health. Um, this is one of the items that I talk about with the Dean on a regular basis. Um, there is a small budget cut to operating funds. I believe it's 2% so far. Who knows what it will be when real budgets come out uh, from the state, but that the school can certainly absorb at this moment in time. Mario's believes that certainly this year, um, we're in very good shape. There's very limited faculty recruiting, uh, mostly recruiting of positions that were not filled last year, uh, both in CS and in statistics. We are not recruiting this year, uh, partly because we've been so successful over the past years and partly because there's no extra allocation from campus of new FTEs coming to 
pretty much any of the schools. The school is focusing on staff realignment. Um, it's already doing some of that with the self-supporting programs. It's looking at some of the other parts of the staff to figure out where the right investments are and where the staff should be. There's some talk about some staff being distributed to departments, so going more decentralized. Um, that's ongoing. We'll see what the, what the outcomes of that will be. Um, and then the perennial item, the school's website, it is being worked on, a company was paid. Uh, there are templates, content is being migrated. Um, there were some hiccups along the way, uh, including Mario's and myself and a couple of others, really having to step in and working with the company much more directly in terms of what a good menu structure is. That was, a, was quite the surprise. Um, but other than that, it, it's on its way and will also trickle down to the department. So the templates include department templates. Um, and we will have a student intern help us migrate this year um, the, the department website to the new templates. If I have my way, we do that before the school, but let's see if we can pull that off. At the department level, um, there is always news uh, in terms of personnel. First one is that Debbie Broadback, who was with our department and with ISR for a very long time, has retired. Um, so. I've interacted with her on a number of occasions afterwards. She is enjoying, though she's not necessarily uh, feeling like she got the best end of the deal being locked at home uh, now that she's retired. And I think we all feel that, um, but certainly uh, she's, she's feeling that, but she's enjoying and uh, staying in touch. We do have a new uh, staff member, Alicia Rios. She is going to be shared. She is shared with the uh, Connected Learning Laboratory. She was full-time there. We are fortunate enough to be able to get her half-time uh, in our department to expand um, sort of the coverage and, and the ability to, to work with our faculty and our students uh, to, to get all the work done that needs to be done. Um, it's kind of sad that we can't really meet you right now, <laughs> but at the same time, welcome, of course. And uh, Marty has sent out new assignments and, and so on and so on where, where we can all go for uh, staff support. We also were successful in faculty recruiting. Uh, welcome, Elena. Welcome, Anne-Marie. Um, again, you've, you've entered and trusted to enter in a crazy environment. I know that all of you have, uh, you know, that you've talked to most of the faculty already. Um, to those who you haven't talked to, you know, feel free to reach out. Others, feel free to reach out. We're tremendously excited to have you here um, and help us, help us strengthen HCI because um, that's, that's the area that both of you are working in, in various shapes and forms. Um, and I've very much enjoyed your contribution so far. Additionally, Madhu Reddy will be joining us in 2021. He's currently at Northwestern, has said yes. Cap still has, said, has to say yes, but that should be any minute. Um, and uh, we look forward to having Madhu help us uh, strengthen both on the health informatics and again, HCI side. We also have two new lecturers in the department, sort of new. Uh, Mark Baldwin was, an, uh, was a grad student, now is lecturing some of our courses full time. And then Matt Beats, uh, who we all know has been around for a long time, um, has chosen to enter the lecturer path and we, we couldn't be happier. And especially Matt, thank you for all that you did for the faculty in terms of being more or less a consultant in terms of uh, teaching remotely and how to do this and etc. Uh, I know that I've leaned on it and I know that others have leaned on it and it's been tremendously valued. The uh, staffing in terms of administrative positions is pretty much the same as last year. Bill Tomlinson is vice chair, Yunan as uh, vice chair for undergraduate affairs, Melissa vice chair for graduate affairs. The new role is Katie Salen. Um, Katie is taking on the role of decade mentor, which prior was grouped with the vice chair for graduate affairs. Um, and we've actually split that uh, to reflect uh, sort of today's times and, and what we need to do as a department, having more folks on board and more folks concerned with uh, our graduate students and wellness and, and life on campus um, is an important thing for the department. And so thank you, Katie, for stepping in. 
Uh, Reggie has agreed to be diversity ambassador and is hard at work at outreach activities. And then Kylie, Katie, and Aaron uh, have agreed to serve as what's informally now known as the care team. There still isn't an official official name, uh, but helping us with departmental climate, departmental climate initiatives, uh, building bridges, and so on and so on. Um, and I know that they're shortly going to reach out, for instance, to the graduate students, um, and that should be any day now. In terms of space, uh, this uh, was a slide that I actually used last year, where at the top and on the left, we were going to get space in ICS1, where the software engineers were going to move. That no longer is part of the plan. Uh, it has changed to this building. Uh, so on the second floor, of the new uh, interdisciplinary science and engineering building, uh, software engineering will be housed there instead. It's a larger space, um, it has more office space, and it also has more space for the graduate students, so it won't be quite as cramped. The old space, this one, uh, that has pretty much been reallocated to CS to use, so um, they will benefit from our, from our design efforts there, and I hope they, they enjoy that, that space. Um, this building is somewhat delayed, but not hugely delayed. So January, February, we believe we should be able to move in, but you know, we will see it when it's actually done. In terms of our undergraduate enrollment, uh, we are healthy. Uh, so informatics has 265 majors on average over the three quarters uh, from the prior year. Software engineering 204, Computer Game Science 250, Business Information Management 142. Uh, putting that in context of computer science, which still is more than 2,000 majors, we are at about 900, I wanna say. So we're not doing terrible at all. Um, computer Game Science, notice the dotted line. Uh, game Design and Interactive Media is the new name for this program. It's officially be approved finally by campus. It's not in the catalog yet, but we will be recruiting a new batch of students in fall to enter uh, this major. And that comes with significant redesign of courses and course content and how the degree program is structured and what it prepares the students for. It was long overdue to redo this, this program and so we're excited that it's here. At the graduate level, uh, informatics PhD students 58 average last year Software engineering 20, master students uh, three and 19. We keep the master's program smaller because we tend to focus on research. At the same time, at the bottom, you see our MHCID and MSUI programs, the professional programs, healthy enrollments uh, there, and those programs prepare students much more for a professional future. And that is mostly it in terms of sort of structural, what's happening data on the department side. In terms of accomplishments, which is always my favorite part of this particular talk, um, I have a number of them that I lifted out. There were far too many to highlight. Uh, so if you don't find yourself here, or if, if, if you, know, you feel like there was something that somebody else did that should have been here, that's all my apologies. There's only so long we have in this talk. And I decided to, to first just highlight some of the accomplishments of our, of our graduate students. So Phoebe, uh, was elected as an affiliate at the Bergman Klein Center for Internet and Society at Harvard, which is an amazing group of folks, and she's super excited that she gets to virtually hang out with them. Lucy uh, won a Zonta International Women in Technology Scholarship, and just to give you a sense of competitiveness here, it first was a local competition that she won, then it was a uh, California competition, I believe, that she won, and she's one of six who was awarded internationally. So all across the world where this society, the Zonta Society uh, operates, she was one of six receiving this uh, particular recognition. So that's quite amazing. Gisette uh, received a Microsoft Research Ada Lovelace Fellowship. And to again, think about numbers here, that is a one in five. There were five awards this year and I'm moving my slides around here so that I can make sure that I have the right numbers. Uh, so there were five this year and Gisette was one of them. So major congratulations there. 
Mayara received a Microsoft Research Dissertation Grant. There were only 10 this year. So again, somebody from our department actually received uh, this award. And uh, yes, Roderick, I knew that was, that was true and I forgot it. Uh, Lucy also won an NSF Graduate Research Fellowship as well, um, which again is, is super nice. Christy and Amanda are two of Google uh, Women Tech Maker Scholars, two of 20 this year, so two in our department. This used to be the Anita, Anita Borg Awards. Um, so you can just imagine, right? So NSF Graduate Research Fellowship, Ada Lovelace, uh, the Microsoft Research Dissertation Grant, Tech Maker Scholar. It's actually an amazing year when it comes to uh, our students being recipients of these, of these awards. So congratulations to, to all of you. And then Clara uh, was uh, awarded a Computing Innovation Fellowship over at Indiana, I believe is where she's going to go for a couple of years. This is the NSF response to the current uh, climate and particularly the, uh, the downturn in the economy. And so uh, it has instituted a program to uh, give graduates who normally might lend the faculty position a postdoctoral experience. And Clara is one of about 50 or so nationwide who received the uh, fellowship. And it's also worth noting that Paul is hosting one of the fellows and two of our former graduate students are also hosting fellows at their now uh, assistant professor uh, position, uh, positions. Over in Boulder and in San Diego. And I think finally on the student part, Rehan, uh, was elected or was chosen to be one of the 2019 rising stars in uh, electrical engineering and computer science, attended that event, and now she's actually on the faculty at uh, UIUC over in Chicago, uh, where she is an assistant professor, which is an amazing accomplishment as well. Um, and she's actually a former recipient of one of the Google fellowships uh, as well. All right. Moving on to former students. Uh, so this is at the ICS Hall of Fame event that happened uh, late last year. Uh, Resolva Gallardo and Greg Boltzer, not Boulder, Boltzer, uh, were recipients of uh, the ICS Hall of Fame and uh, award and recognized into the ICS Hall of Fame. Last year, all four of the nominees were informatics. This year, too, we, we still take it. Um, and Rosalva, of course, has been a great supporter of uh, our students and has donated, as I told you all last year, um, $10,000 a year for the Rosalva Gallardo Valencia uh, Fellowship. Um, and this year, all of that, or 10,000 of that was matched as well by Google. So we're building up an endowment as well uh, to hopefully have that award in perpetuity. Rankings. This is, this is a, a little tongue-in-cheek ranking. Uh, University of California, Irvine is a leading non-Ivy League school for soft engineering. We came in number one in this ranking from, from some random place. Um, of course, anytime you're number one, you have to put it on your slides. The one that I probably care more about is U.S. News and World Report. Software engineering was ranked number six in the U.S by far the highest program in ICS, the next highest program and actually the only one and the only other one in the top 25 uh, was uh, machine learning and data science. And so software engineering being recognized as such is a fabulous accomplishment. Once you're in the top five, you're actually published in the paper. So hopefully next year we can, we can nudge one up. Um, I don't believe they rank HCI separately. So that's one of the things that I wish they would have done. Um, I suspect we would have done great in that area and NIDA for Health Informatics and some other areas. But uh, this one, you know, we'll take it. Uh, Jim was awarded a Most Influential Paper Award at ASC 2019, which looks back over the previous 15 years. And um, picks one paper over those 15 years that has had the most influence. And so that paper was by Jim and his former advisor. So congratulations, Jim. Stacy and Iftigar uh, were awarded Teach Access Curriculum Awards. Uh, they're small awards, but the reason I highlighted here is A, the direction, why uh, accessibility in teaching, right, is, is an important thing to think about. But second, again, there were only 10 awards and two came our way. So we, we're doing amazing things. 
This is a platform that Krista has been developing, Krista Lopes and her group. It's called Clouder. In response to many, many conferences going virtual, there clearly is a need for better support to hold these virtual conferences. And Krista not only jumped at that opportunity, but has developed an, an entire system together with a bunch of collaborators. ICSI, the main conference in software engineering, ran on it. And if I understand it properly, CECW will also be running on it. And there's a number of other conferences that are adopting it. So, so very practical, but at the same time, incredibly valuable work for the community. Earth School is a, is a somewhat off the beaten path thing, but when COVID first happened, there was an initiative um, by TED-Ed and a variety of other organizations to put together a virtual curriculum. And Bill Tomlinson was one of the faculty members who participated in and developed curriculum together with a couple of others here at UCI for Earth School, which gave us great exposure and is actually part of a broader initiative that some of you may have heard about, but some of you not yet, which is called Solutions That Scale. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, together with engineering and physical sciences and social ecology, um, ICS and specifically Bill and myself are working on bringing uh, sustainability research across campus together under a single umbrella and a single vision. Uh, for now, it's been a group of about 10 to 15 that's been talking for about two hours, hour and a half, uh, every Friday, now every Monday, talking about how to structure this, how to move forward, um, and so on, and so on. Some of the things that are happening, like Earth School, are in immediate outflows from that, um, but other things that are happening are a little bit more intentional. So soon there will be a call for graduate uh, fellows to work at the interdisciplinary uh, boundaries between the various schools on hopefully solutions that scale. So understanding sustainability and climate change and uh, coming up with innovations in that space. So, so watch out for that call coming forward. And that's all coming out of this group of faculty starting to meet approaching the deans, the deans buying in, and it's actually the deans that are uh, putting forward the funds for these graduate research fellows. So they're recognizing the importance uh, of this, this effort, which is great. Um, Katie Salen has been working a lot on an initiative called Raising Good Gamers. It's brought together an amazing roster of uh, people on the advisory board. It's brought together an amazing event and an amazing report. I encourage you all to read it. It's all about diversity, inclusion, and fair play in the gaming world and how to create positive change uh, in that space. Um, and this was one of the projects that ICS funded last year with uh, the Dean Mario's seed funding, seed funding grants. And I look forward to where this is gonna go next. And so why am I telling you about these? I could tell you many, many more projects, but part of what I sort of wanna highlight is that this department is really amazing and, and I really appreciate my colleagues in, in doing research that matters. And, and if you remember about a year and a half or so ago, I asked everybody to say, what would you like the world to be? And I collected quotes from everybody. And we said things like Kai said, where technology does not get in the way of clinical work. Or Daniel said, where the data you collect is useful for you, not just for others. Or Roderick said, where technology supports robust civic institutions and their missions. And, and everybody who gave an answer, in the end actually gave an answer that really is about humans, human life, our, 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 way in, our way in the world, and how to actually make it better for us. And there's many others on this particular slide, but I put here all the faculty simply because I, I like how all this work is coming together. And I, I like seeing all the initiatives that all of you are involved in. And what I'm trying to do at this moment in time is actually to foreground some of the, what Judy Olson would nicely call the moral imperative behind the work that we're doing. And so in the redesign of our department website, I'm hoping to use some of this, this language and some of this, this, um, these values uh, moving, moving forward. And the reason this matters is that in the end, um, this is something that sometimes comes out of that. So I can't completely unveil everything yet, uh, but there is a multi-million dollar philanthropic gift uh, coming to the department, school slash department, 
to endow faculty and student support in the area of responsible, equitable, and accessible technologies. Uh, the details are forthcoming on the inevitably slow timeline of the university. Um, we're waiting for the university to put out the official press release. That has not happened yet, but as soon as that happens, I can tell you more about the amount of funds, where it's coming from, and, and what we as a department are going to do with this. Um, and, you know, it's, it's recognition of the effort that we're doing here, um, and it's, it's just a, a great, in my mind, first step, right? I, I want us to be more engaged in this kind of activity and have more success in this particular space. Um, but this is a great uh, boost for the department and our faculty and our students. So last but not least, uh, what about the year ahead, right? Um, well, this is not gonna go away. Um, and some of it actually shouldn't go away. Some of it really should go away. Uh, some of it should not go away because we should be paying proper attention to it. But what I say next is sort of couched in where we are and what the climate is today. So my outlook this year really is to partly focus on, on well-being or to almost you know, exclusively focus on well-being almost, right? Is um, those of you who've heard me talk uh, with students and with faculty, health and family and all that other stuff comes first. And so um, that is sort of a precondition for us to be able to, to work and work well. Um, but that said, there's things we can do in the department uh, to, to take care of each other and to create a, a good environment for everybody. And so the care team that I mentioned earlier uh, is ready to roar. Um, they already are, are doing things that I'm aware of. Um, they, they will be reaching out to various other constituencies very shortly as well. And I look forward to what they come up with. So far, they've come up with great creative ideas. And I look forward to the outcome of that. Uh, the department also uh, committed to funding affinity groups. And so we've thus far gotten one reply. Um, if anybody else wants to form affinity groups, there's some money behind it to support the activities that you might want to engage in. The travel fund has been somewhat retargeted. So if you need to attend online conferences or online events, uh, by all means, you know, come knock on our door. And of course the emergency fund is still very active. We actually increased the amount of funding in there and, and let us know if you need uh, support for a particular emergency. And then last but not least, uh, in response to all the discussions that have taken place, um, we now are putting together and actually offering a professional development course that talks a lot about life as a student, the kinds of pitfalls that are there, the kinds of things to think about. And I encourage you know those of you who are not enrolled yet but think you might benefit, take a look at it. Uh, talk to Rebecca Black, she's offering it. It's gonna be a great, uh, great lineup of topics and people who are gonna be featured there. And most of it is actually meant to be discussions, right? So there's topics and we're gonna talk about it, about these topics in a, in a, in a good way. In terms of our budget, um, as I said, the school is in good shape. There's a little bit of a cut. Um, the department is also in good shape. Uh, so we got $6 million in new grants and gifts, which is the highest number that I've ever seen in the 10 years now as chair, um, including from the National Science Foundation, CDC, and a number of quite prestigious uh, foundations. So I'm super happy to see that. Keep up the great work. Uh, Master of Software Engineering and Master of HI and Design are both in a financially sound position. Um, both, I mean, Master of HI a long time ago paid off its debt, but Software Engineering paid off its debt, its initial investments in the first year. Of course, we were worried about enrollments this year. Uh, MHID has 40 some, and the Master of Software Engineering has 50 students. A good number of them have chosen to attend from their home country because they can't get in the country but nonetheless have enrolled and have said, yes, we are here um, and we are here to join in this program. So this is looking, looking good for us and actually equally good for the students. Hopefully um, they get a great education anyways, and especially Master of Software Engineering is set up as remote and MHCD the first, the, the entire year is remote, Master of Software Engineering is the first quarter. So this quarter we can certainly absorb the situation quite well. The school's allocations to the department are under a little bit of pressure. Um, so the Dean has every year made some adjustments budget wise. 
One of the things that has happened this year is the block allocation is firm. It's always been flat. It's been flat for a decade. The block is where we pay the first year fellowships from. Um, as we've gotten greater enrollments, we've been creative and been able to do that. And, and you, as you know, we've had discussions about how to continue that. This year is the first year that if there was some overage that you got less the following year. Uh, that has not been the case in past years. So it's being held much more firmly now. And it's the same for the lecture allocation. So as we built a teaching schedule for next year, we can't be quite as flexible in sort of individuals coming on board um, whenever we need to. We have to be a little mindful of the lecture allocation and how much money we use there. Of course, any surplus from the self-supporting programs can compensate for these factors. And that is one of the reasons why we're super, uh, super happy to have those programs and have them be in a financially sound position. In terms of academic programs, I already mentioned the, the BS in game design and interactive media is officially approved. Uh, so that comes with lots of changes to courses, but that's a, that's a good thing. I, I very much look forward to the changes in the students and the changes in the education that they're gonna receive. Uh, the BS in informatics is being updated at this moment in time. Uh, it's time for a refresh and uh, we've, we tried it last year. We had a committee, ran into COVID, um, did some work over summer. And at this moment, individual groups are working on parts of the degree to, to bring that back together into a more holistic discussion. Um, and one of the explicit objectives is to actually build a better on-ramp for students early in their career uh, so that they can discover informatics earlier rather than now, most students take informatics, an informatics course, probably in their third year. And so to change that up and have them be exposed in the first year uh, is an imp important and explicit objective. And then last but not least, uh, there is a planning going on for a master program in connected learning technology and design that would be joined with education. And so stay tuned for updates there. Finally, in terms of overall, um, you know, we, there's no denying it's a complex and very uncertain year ahead. Uh, we all know the factors at play. Uh, what I ask is that we can count on each other as a community of faculty, staff, and students. Kindness, understanding, accommodating, support, all of those words and more, um, and being available for each other. Now more than ever, uh, we need to support each other. Um, as I said early on, uh, some of us have been deeply affected by the factors that are there. Actually, many of us have. That's not necessarily always visible. That's not necessarily out in the public. Um, but it is good for you to know that that is taking place. So, so I ask for, um, you know, in, in many ways, forgiveness if somebody needs a, misses a meeting, like me this morning. Uh, so uh, be available for each other, um, especially in terms of bringing in the new students, bringing in the new faculty, uh, bringing in our new staff, Felicia. Um, reach out sometime, have a conversation, um, and just, just to chat or come to coffee hour or, or whatever venue. Uh, that works. So it's a complex year. It's going to be a super challenging year. I'm very worried about what's going to happen after this year, right? Um, there's no sign yet that COVID, for instance, is going to disappear. We're, we should be able to weather it this year. I don't expect us to be back on campus in winter quarter. Once we're not back on campus on winter quarter, I don't really expect the undergrads to be back for spring quarter either. So we might be looking at another 11, 12 months before you know, what used to be normalcy, students on campus might be here. Um, so that's, that's the times we live in. Um, and you know, we're doing what we can to adjust in our teaching and our research and, and our mentoring. The upcoming seminars, I think Daniel already posted the link. Um, I'm super excited about the lineup, uh, equally so for what he's cooking up for winter quarter. I encourage you to join. I encourage you to ask questions. And I encourage you to learn from the folks that, that come by. And that, for me, is the set of slides for today. So I'm happy to answer any and all questions that folks might have. Thanks, Andre. So. Um to keep things a little bit orderly, uh, you can either post your question directly into the chat via text, or you can just post that you have a question and I'll ask you to unmute. If you post your question in text, then I'll read it off. 
um, or, or you can just post that you have one. Uh, Stacy Branham asks the question, is there a way forward to get our transfer numbers back up, our transfer numbers into uh, ICS in the department? Um, unclear. Um, so I'm not 100% sure that we, um, what's, so I do know part of what's going on there is that was an agreement and that agreement is no longer there, right? If, if you fulfill these requirements, then you were guaranteed a spot in the programs. Um, that caused instability in, in how many students would join. Um, at the same time, I see a post by, by, by Chris, who is actually listening and is telling me they're on it. So um, I'm gonna defer to the Student Affairs Office, uh, not necessarily in answering right now, uh, but letting folks know that, you know, working on it because that was a pretty precipitous drop and certainly the diversity is significant. Um, it is also at play in the admissions process, right, at the, at the earlier years and it's one of the reasons why we want to bring some of the informatics courses to the first year uh, to, to, to bring a more diverse set of students into our programs from early on. And it was also one of the driving factors behind the redesign of computer game science into game design and interactive media and changing the intro courses there. So, so diversity is on our mind in all of that. Um, how are we gonna bring the, uh, how are we gonna bring the number of transfers up uh, under an admissions model where admissions is still central? I don't have a good answer, but I'm happy to inquire. Uh, Nika Noor asks, uh, questions for future planning, though not expecting answers today. Any ETA on when uh, the university might inform departments if we're going virtual in winter? Uh, and then the second question is, any clear guidance on how to address obtaining California residency for future quarters uh, while we're relocated uh, due to COVID? I don't know, and I don't know. Um, <laughs> so I, so these, these are questions that I know grad division is getting and Jillian as vice provost is getting, you know, daily, almost hourly. Um, my, my, my read is they are aware of these questions um, and when they have an answer that they're confident in, they will share it. If they're not confident yet, they won't put it out yet because they don't want to put any false information out there. So. So though I hate to say it, it it's waiting um, is the best answer here. But if, if at some point you start getting super uncomfortable, poke Melissa and myself and we will poke grad, grad division on our behalf and we go take a look what we can do. Uh, Roger Cook says, thanks for the talk. Uh, have you heard from students about the things we can do to help them feel part of the community? Looking for suggestions or best practices uh, specifically for our new doctoral students. Um, I, not necessarily. I think the, the person who's been most in touch with the first year students, um, and you know, I'll let the first year students obviously, <laughs> obviously contribute as well. Melissa just had a meeting with them last week. Um, and um, what was I gonna say? Just last week and learned a few things. Um, we talked about it as a faculty we don't necessarily have the right answers how to do it. So, so I would like to say anybody who has any ideas for do this, have an event like this, even if it's virtual, um, you know, do a, do a round robin, you know, meet and greet on a day. I, I don't know what people feel would actually work for them. So, so I would say any and all suggestions are welcome. Drop them with me or drop them with Melissa or Katie. Um, I know that the care team, one of the things they're thinking about is this um, and figuring out how do we build community and how do we maintain community uh, during a time like this is, is certainly high on the list of, of things for us to consider. But do we necessarily have answers? Not quite. Any other questions? Other questions. Uh, 
to, to provide one part of the answer to you, Roderick, though, is the, the professional development course is, is interesting because we had especially aimed that for first year students. But it seems like it's more second and third year students that are enrolling than first year students. Um, it's going to be a year long and we know that the first years are maxed out in some ways in their courses. The professional development course is pretty lightweight. So um, you know, if you want to just even just hang out with, with the group that's there, feel free to do so. Uh, Nika asks, any ETA on the application process for the fund Hasso Plattner funding opportunity? Um, that is, so the Hasso Plattner funding is sitting with the uh, AI folks, more so in computer science. Um, we have pushed them informally on a variety of occasions that the ethics of AI and you know the consequences of it should be should be part of what you guys are looking at and but they're looking at that I want to say more so from an algorithmic perspective than a perspective that we would take here in informatics so I don't know how much of that fund funding is is really aimed towards us versus is going to be eaten up mostly by folks in computer science um, that said, the GAN grant that uh, Paul Durish is managing and, and obtained is much more so on the impacts and consequences of AI. So that's, that's certainly a place where uh, your advisor should knock on Paul's door. Feels good to be able to say knock on Paul's door, not my door. <laughs> not that we're knocking on any doors right now. Yeah, I know. Fair enough, too. Yes. Yep. Uh And Paul is indeed responding that the HPI stuff is probably not going to be an open call, but more appointed GSRs. But yes, he's happy to hear from people about the GAN. So, so there you go. Other questions? Anything from our other students? If there is no question, I'll ask one. If it is relevant, please answer. So, uh, your, uh, or if you want to skip. So, I am just joining you from the music department. I'm a PhD student there. And uh, I was wondering, I was uh, uh, reading the catalog. When you accept new PhD students, what are you looking for? Like, how, what's the main focuses in the uh, program? Oh, uh, well, I, I'll answer briefly, but then shoot us an email and we can give you a, a longer one-on-one -on -one conversation with one of our folks. Um, what we're looking for in the program is incredibly broad, actually. Uh, so, so many of our faculty do such different things that it varies from people who do deeply technical work to ethnographic work to experimental work. Um, and so what we're mostly looking for is people who are interested in the kinds of questions we're answering and the methodologies that we use to do so. And, and so if we feel like there's a good affinity with your interest, our interest, and the kinds of questions you wanna ask and the kinds of questions we wanna work on, and it doesn't have to be exactly aligned, but sort of in the broader purview of the questions we answer, we, we, we ask and answer in the department, that goes a really long way. Thank so you. really sh shared vision. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for joining us too. Of course. Anything else? Okay, then in that case, I'll wrap it up and welcome you all back for the next one in two weeks where we're excited to bring in Tawana Petty. Thanks, everyone. Yep. Thank you all. <laughs>